Hello, welcome to my Web University free educational videos. Um, so far, we have uh, covered uh, the direct path to Linux Ubuntu chapter one through chapter five. And um, this is um, on the website that I'm um, running everything um, online. MyWebUniversity.com is my website. And I have posted everything so far about more than 162 videos on the subject of computer science related topics. And uh, that's uh, shell programming, uh, Python, uh, C, C++, um, operating systems such as uh, Linux, Unix, um, Windows, um, almost everything that you can name of. Um, there's videos here. Apache Web Server, MySQL, database, Linux, uh, Ubuntu, and then um, and Linux, Rocky, Red Hat, everything that you can just get it. And I have some videos also for um, the language uh, for C. So um, uh, it is a lot of the videos are in English and I'm making some for C um, or um, Dari videos as well. And then um, the one that uh, we have so far covered is um, right here, basically on the um, my Web University free education videos. And this is my YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so you could get the latest and, and greatest. I know that this is a, a recent um, YouTube um, channel that I brought up. But I think for these videos, um, you need to take advantage of them uh, just by a subscription, which is free, and subscribe and uh, watch them and then learn them online. Uh, everything is uh, available for you, and you can get a job to support yourself and families and the community. And then uh, make comments if you need some improvement, uh, some areas that I need to meet uh, your needs better just make a comment say i need uh, like awk i need python i need c c plus plus whatever operating systems uh, documentation anything that you need the shell programming mention it uh, so i know that what is your needs and then i'll uh, make sure that those needs are met um, accordingly uh, and then uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and make some comments if you like it. So, um, and then uh, you, that would be um, appreciated. That, that's how you support me. Um, but um, for today, uh, I'm going to continue on the Linux and Unix um, shell scripting. Uh, so we have already covered this one uh, chapter, uh, I mean, um, Unix and uh, Linux is scripting with everything that we uh, could name of, of as shell scripting. And then um, the environment variable was this video. And then the F statement was uh, number three. So these are already posted on YouTube as well. And you can uh, see them. This is actually on YouTube, but I also have them on my chapter five of the book. So let me go to uh, chapter five. And uh, this uh, book, The Direct Path to Linux Ubuntu, I wrote it. Uh, everything is online. You can learn uh, Linux and Unix Ubuntu, uh, especially um, for free online. You don't need to install uh, Linux on your machine. All you need is internet and browser, and then you go learn, learn chapter by chapters. And I have examples, I have demos, videos, everything. You can practice them all online. You don't need to install any Linux or any Docker or VMware or any software that is um, uh, needed. Only you need a browser and internet access and you can either watch the videos on YouTube uh, or my web university, those links that I have or just uh, read them and uh, the documentation as I uh, show you or practice the examples. So let's go to uh, chapter five, which is the shell programming. And for example, in uh, chapter five, I have a list of um, shell programs. And basically on these shell programs, you will be like uh, opening them up and reading them. 
and then practice them and then uh, just understand them and uh, run them online and then um, see the output um, online as well by clicking on these buttons and uh, just providing the parameters. You can also do an interactive uh, session um, by going that one. All of this was uh, shown on video number one, this one, uh, Linux, Unix, for um, uh, born shell, corn shell, uh, bash, C shell, through C shells, Z shells, and awk. So uh, that was uh, the first video. And then the second video, I discussed environment variables. And then and that was uh, a very good discussion for every environment variable, local, global, uh, set, set ENV, print ENV, all of those ones are discussed here. Then the video number three, which I posted about 15 hours ago, this is uh, the F statement um, that is uh, doing uh, the F statement, F the analysis statement, F uh, LF uh, and L, uh, F LF, L spark, all of that one is discussed. So you're welcome to watch these videos and um, make some comments. Um, so let's just go uh, for today's um, uh, view and that I have uh, actually this presentation that I have here. I'm going to go to a slideshow. And um, first, I'm going to just go through a summary of the first three videos for Unix and Linux shell scripting. So let me get started with the um, slideshow. As you know, the first one, um, born shell, corn shell, bash, seashell through seashells or a top seashell um, and then a Z, SH and AUK are all uh, covered on video number one. That's why I have this number one here. This is not number one video, but it is a video that uh, you could say that uh, for Unix and Linux shell scripting, this one uh, covered everything related to those um, shells and then um, we, I showed you also those examples uh, there. So that was video number one. Video number two was the environment variable about Unix and Linux. Basically, when I say Unix and Linux, uh, Linux is almost like a clone of Unix. So uh, Unix uh, was uh, introduced at Bell Laboratory by Ken Thompson and uh, Dennis Ritchie in, back in 1969, 1970. At at t Laboratory version was introduced and then um, at uh, some point, and then and, uh, 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 Linus uh, Trovert um, came out with um, the Linux uh, kernel. And then um, from there on, everybody contributed the GNU version. Um, the GNU version came out, and then um, now we have a lot of um, uh, distribution version for Linux whether it's Debian, uh, which runs Ubuntu, or Linux Mint runs also under Ubuntu, or Red Hat uh, has uh, CentOS and um, Rocky, and then there's a lot of other open source and that are and they are like open uh, Suzy, and then uh, uh, Caldera was at one point there. There's so many of them. So um, let's just get started with this. Um, uh, second uh, video, which is the F statement that we covered yesterday, and then the video is already posted. The F statement uh, we covered enough, but um, I did all the F uh, the analysis statement and F uh, LF and F LF else part. But I wanted to make sure that on the next uh, I sh show you a separate video. So I prepared this video number four, which I'm going to discuss uh, now. And this is the nested F statement. And the nested F statement is um, basically on um, all kind of uh, shell you can run a nested F statement. And then the nested F statement allows you to run one F statement inside another F statement. So like a parent uh, kind of child process uh, on the system, but they are uh, independent of uh, the comparison. So every time you do a Boolean match on the first uh, F statement, if the Boolean match happens, um, if the Boolean match happens, uh, basically 
Uh, let me just go back to that previous um, screen. Somehow it went too fast on the next one. And now it's moving so slowly. Yeah. So on the if Boolean uh, expression is found, uh, then and the statement after that one is uh, executed. Uh, these statements sometimes you could have um, sometimes you could have um, uh, a combination of other f statement within uh, that f statement. So it could be a statement, a command. Um, function calls, it could be a statement that is assignment a statement or another Boolean expression uh, uh, that is tested within that another F statement. If it is done, uh, like right here on the second uh, line, uh, third line, actually uh, fourth line, if Boolean expression is there, then you to go through another uh, set of uh, statement to execute. And this nested statement could be maybe two level, three level, four level direction, but you should not go in definite levels. Uh, at some point you have to make sure that your code uh, handles the um, algorithm better. Uh, so you're not just kind of like going deeper and deeper and get stuck somewhere there by uh, infinite loop or infinite um, statements that are or, uh, uh, not breakable. So um, this is the structure of the F then else statement with um, nested F. Uh, else is not there on this part, it's just a nested F. So and that is the structure that I just showed you here. And this is an example of it and the actual syntax. So in this case, I'm saying if dollar sign pound is uh, less than two, if the number of argument that was passed on to the command line that was less than two, then uh, call the function usage. Uh, but uh, go to uh, uh, after call the function usage, go through another F statement and if you see the variable and that is previously uh, set uh, for uh, found, if the value of dollar sign pound, uh, dollar sign found is equal one, that EQ means equal. And when you're a comparison, uh, comparing integers, you use those symbols, EQ or G, uh, E and greater or equal or greater than GT and uh, so on. I will discuss that one when we come up uh, to video number five with uh, F-test uh, kind of, uh, there's a command on uh, Linux and Unix called test, but I'll discuss that one on video number five. So um, this one, when they uh, do that, if dollar sign found is equal one, then uh, set the flag to true. Otherwise, set the flag false. Uh, so notice that here I put after the else a semicolon, that's almost like pressing enter. So on Unix, uh, whether you write it on um, Unix and Linux, whether you write it on one line, uh, separated by semicolon, a list of commands or a list of instruction, it will know it or you just press enter to go to a new line and then you say and then. For example, if the dollar sign pound uh, less than uh, two after the bracket, I could put up, I could have put a semicolon and then I didn't have to go to a new line. But this is more cleaner to me that I go to a then because that is statement is a expression that I'm checking. If that is becoming uh, and that expression becomes true, then and that then part is going to execute. So this is what basically the syntax of it is. And then the dollar sign question mark is always uh, on uh, born shell, corn shell, and bash. The dollar sign question mark if it is equal zero. Mean, meaning that the command, previous command succeeded, uh, otherwise it failed. So uh, any non uh, zero value is a failure. And then um, for the seashell, it is dollar sign status, but uh, we're talking about born shell, corn shell and bash. So that's why the status code is dollar sign question mark. And then uh, this one was um, um, for the lecture part of uh, the video. I'm going to just now demo um, using a terminal with um, 
actually a program that I wrote in, a, I called it something like uh, minus L nested, um, nested and dash, and dash uh, uh, nested something dot bash. I think nested F, yeah, nested dash F dot bash. So when you put the asterisk, it uh, finds out anything with that name. If I have too many of them, it's there. And so notice that uh, permission of this file is uh, read, write, execute by the owner, and then uh, read and execute by the group, which is also WLUTP, and then uh, read and execute by others. So that means I have um, full privilege to read, write, and execute this file. And this is a dash, meaning it's a regular file. Later on, on uh, video number uh, five, I will show you some of those um, permissions and how you could test for them, whether it's an executable file or uh, writable, readable. It's an ordinary file, it's a directory, it's a symbolic link, what is it? We will discuss that one on a second uh, video, which is coming after this, um, because these topics are related. So I'm going to just um, uh, clear my screen first and then um, do this ls minus l. And then this time I'm going to say cat minus n nested um, nested dash f dot uh, bash. So I'll we'll, uh, see the content of it. Luckily, it fits on one screen. So I just um, uh, purposely actually. Um, put some of these comments and, and next to each other um, there and formatted it uh, so I could just uh, not have too many blank lines and go to the next line and stop it. But notice that on the first line, I have this user Benny and B um, bash. This tells you that whenever you run a, a shell script, whether it's bash, corn shell, born shell, C shell, uh, through C shell or um, anything, Z, SH, um, or Python or uh, PHP or Perl. The ENB is a, a program, it's a binary that is going to just uh, find out this um, bash uh, as an interpreter in this case, and it's going to just uh, load it. Uh, so the subsequent program lines that are there, it is going to just know that this these are all code of bash script. If I had this corn shell, then the syntax would be corn shell. If I had C shell, the syntax on line two through line 24 had to be C shell syntax. So it is important that whatever you uh, define on the first line, this is called shebang. And then user ben env, if I type in here, say uh, file user ben env, you can see it's an executable link format, a 64-bit um, binary. And that one is uh, basically, if I go user ben env and then type in a search, now it just dropped me to a search environment variable. So like if I do a ps um, dash p dollar sign dollar sign, you can see that it is my current directory um, uh, session environment, not directory, the environment is um, 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 born shell. So if I just uh, go another one, say user pen env, and then I say corn shell, if I have corn shell, which I do, then I say ps. Now notice that from SH, it uh, uh, dropped me to the corn shell. And if I do the same thing, say, user pen env and then uh, c shell and then now i'm on a c shell notice my c shell prompt is the percentage so now i am on the c shell ps minus p and dollar sign dollar sign it tells me that i'm on a c shell and if i just do ps um, by itself i could see that um, whereas my last process id which is uh, equivalent to this number so the syntax that I type in here has to be a seashell syntax. And so if I exit out of this one and I type in PS, now I'm back on the corn shell. So now if I just do echo dollar sign, dollar sign, and then that is uh, showing the process ID of corn shell. So I wanna exit out of this one as well. 
and then echo dollar sign dollar sign. Now I'm on the uh, born shell. So exit one more time, and now this is a back to square one where I started off originally and um, getting into the ENB. The reason I did this is I wanted to show you what is this um, ENB that we are just addressing it. Use a Ben ENB is an executable file. So when you're passing the argument on the first line of your code, like for example, if I say head minus one and then nested dash f dash bash, you can see on the first line, um, I put this uh, statement, this head minus one, uh, saying that read the first line of it and just exit out. So it reads that first line and it says, oh, uh, you're using env bash, which is this one, this syntax is telling you that your system is portable. That means that if you go to any Linux or Unix machine, most likely if this program, uh, use a Ben env, is installed uh, on the same path location by default. But if you hard code it to say uh, shebang slash bin bash, and then bash is not on the slash bin and as uh, on the user local bin, it might not uh, work on the system, it might work, depending on how, whether that one is symbolic link or some other version that is there that is uh, the same version that you want to use uh, that it's art coded art coding is never uh, a good idea so that's why this env uh, bash that you put on the first line is dynamic it, it will just find out where the bash is so it does like a which a bash and it says oh use a bin bash and it loads use a bin bash uh, for it from there as we saw in the past. So let's go back to um, cat, uh, clear my screen here and cat minus n um, nested and dash f dot um, bash. So I'm um, um, and, and not net stat, net, 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 nested. I was saying nested, but I was typing net stat because some of those commands, you, my fingers are <laughs> already running it. Uh, so uh, and let's just go to a user ben env bash, and then uh, we are uh, going to open the file in ben, so we can have a better uh, look at it. And then um, notice that the vim, I have set the line numbers one through 24 already. So on the vim, you could say set uh, no and you, and that line number will go out. But if you say set and you, the line comes in. And then the syntax on, so uh, syntax um, off, it will just change the, uh, those coloring uh, there. Uh, syntax on will just put it uh, with a nicer color. So that way there. There's a lot of other ones for indentation, highlight, search, but in this uh, video, I'm, I'm not concentrating on the VIM. I already have a video for you uh, on VIM. If you're interested, please uh, watch that video. And it is somewhere um, on, uh, let's say on the YouTube. Uh, let me just go to YouTube first. And um, so the, uh, one of these videos about Vim uh, right here, this one is the uh, Vim editorial is basically, I uh, give you a 44 uh, minutes, uh, 45 minutes uh, of the explanation about Vim, all kind of uh, discussion. So please watch that one if you need to uh, learn Vim. If you're already mastering it, that's great. Um, so let's go back to this uh, session. Here on the first thing that I uh, have comments, uh, so basically I see what I'm going to do to demonstrate the nested F statement. And then the author name and then uh, Wahid Lutfi and then the copyright. That um, uh, pound shebang 169 basically uh, write the uh, copyright and HTML codes and everything. 
So if you want to just uh, display it on the HTML code, that's uh, what that one does. Um, date, um, for the day, um, basically, um, I'm just saying that what day of uh, the week it is. Basically, date uh, plus uh, percentage U, that would return uh, a seven for a Sunday, for example. Today is Sunday, I'm producing this video and then, um, uh, today it will uh, just be uh, Sunday. So the um, AM or PM, the date command plus uh, percentage P, percentage P is going to say whether it's PM or AM. So that uh, string will be uh, uh, stored onto the AM, PM. And then I clear the screen because when later on when I um, print the format, I just wanna make sure that um, the uh, formatting is uh, nicer. If a dollar sign date uh, greater than five, that means either it's a Saturday or Sunday. Six and seven, uh, as you can see on the comment section I put uh, here uh, for uh, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I mean, Saturday, Sunday, is six and seven. So if it is greater than five, most likely it's not weekdays. And then I just say uh, today is a day of the weekend. And then, um, so that else port is gonna come, but then we have a nested if a statement saying that, well, if it is um, AM or PM and just check for uh, that variable, if it was um, AM or PM was uh, PM, then it's gonna just say it's in the afternoon, otherwise it's gonna say in the morning. So that uh, if, uh, else statement is going to be executed and that's a nested statement. Uh, if a statement within another if a statement is called nested if a statement. Whenever you have one um, loop under inside another loop, you call uh, it a nested for loop or nested while loop or nested loop. The same thing with branching and when you're writing a if a statement, and you're branching to another um, uh, kind of condition, at some point you check for further F statement, those uh, further F statement are called nested F statement. So here I have uh, included two F statement within the main F statement. So the main F statement says dollar sign day and day dash GT dash GT means greater than five. It is not greater uh, than or equal. So if it was a GE, it would be greater or equal. Um, but it is uh, greater than, that means five is not going to be uh, cash uh, on that one because five is uh, actually a Friday. So in this case, it's going to come to the nested F statement. Then it's gonna say, um, okay, um, since it is, um, AM or PM is going to be uh, checked on the F statement, whether whichever one it is, uh, depending on when you run this program, dynamically will uh, produce either AM or PM with that uh, line on number seven. This line on number seven, basically it is either going to um, display um, AM or uh, PM, depending on what time of the day you run it. This line on number six is gonna return uh, the number one through uh, seven, and whether it's um, Monday or uh, Sunday on the seven. So then we are going to uh, check it. Notice that uh, the number here is different than the cron job entry. They start from zero through six, six being Sunday and then as, uh, and zero being Monday, I believe that's how um, the cron tab um, uh, command will uh, give you exact uh, numbering how they order it. Uh, so uh, it is uh, evening time if it is uh, PM and if it's AM, it's in the morning time. Then I have another if a statement here that I'm checking against uh, the number seven. If it is Sunday, because I, I know that I'm running this on Sunday, then I want to test uh, that it must be Sunday. So if it is Sunday, can I just uh, verify or validate this condition? Today I run this script and it did not fail. 
So I put this uh, other F, uh, statement, and that's another nested statement inside there. You can have a couple of uh, more if you want to. And then if uh, this condition of else is uh, not the case, then today is a weekday. So that's how the two uh, days are there. And then um, let's just get um, to uh, save it. And then uh, clear my screen and then say nest, nested dash f dot search. Uh, and actually, the search is not there. The bash is the one that we want to run. So it says today is a day of the weekend, which is uh, Sunday. Uh, it is now evening time, uh, evening or night time or PM time. Today is Sunday, as you can see, and then uh, Sunday, 11 September 22, and it is uh, 7.34 PM Eastern Day Time. So you can see if I type in date, it will return the same time uh, as uh, dynamically is there. And if I just do a calendar, you can see it is uh, September 11. And so that uh, shows the code that is working uh, properly. And if I just uh, do um, a cat minus n on the script, at minus n on the script, you can see that it's um, doing exactly what I was uh, asking for it. And the output is showing there properly as well. So thanks for watching our channel. And um, uh, I appreciate it uh, that you are watching it and uh, making sure that you learn for, uh, from it. Please um, make some comments uh, if you are interested in something that I haven't covered. Uh, please let me know so I could just make a uh, video that uh, meets your needs. That's what, what my job is. I just want to help you out. Thank you so much. God bless you all. So I'm going to run this piece uh, of such a script. And uh, again, uh, this is um, my Web University free education videos. My name is Wahid Lutfi, and um, this is my YouTube channel. And um, I'm going to just say peace to you all. God bless you all. Take care. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.